Hey guys, uh, hello everyone, welcome to the Siege and Sandfox, Siege and Sandfox, wow, it's been a long day without talking, the Siege and Sandfox livestream. Uh, I'm Chris Wilson, the level designer on the project, uh, and actually for a change, I'm going to be talking about level design, because at the moment I've been doing a lot of AI, and that's kind of been the focus, but we get a lot of questions about our level design, more towards the implementation side, but I thought this is a good opportunity to talk about both the way we actually literally implement stuff, and also our general sort of philosophy and high level view, which actually tends to be more where I live these days. So uh, let's start with the sort of higher level stuff. Um, and for that, really, all you're trying to convey in the things we're building is um, your intent, right? What, you're, what you actually want to happen in terms of design and the gameplay mechanically, that sort of stuff. Visually, at this stage, I don't even care. This is a good example of something I've been working on, which I'll come back to later. But um, basically, I was testing out a new jump mechanic that we're working on. So all I really cared about was if I could make this distance and, um, you know, specifically preventing other things. So for example, I don't want you to hit a wall run up here and I want you to jump up there. Uh, we have to wall run and jump to this platform, but not that platform and so on and so forth. So that's all I care about. And at this stage, you just want to white box, do some blocks, something like this. Um, some of the other guys don't tend to do it this way, um, which I will talk about in more detail. But how we've ended up in that situation is kind of interesting because traditionally when you work on a project like this, um, what will happen is that you'll white box the majority of it like this. You'll build it up because you don't kind of know what you want in terms of art and um, art will then gradually catch up. Because of the way this project's unfolded, actually, art ended up ahead of us, and they're still kind of ahead of us in many ways. And because it's tile-based as well, obviously, um, it's a there's still a great workload, but it's kind of slightly reduced. But as I kind of... Old school's the wrong word, but it's kind of the way I like to roll. I like to do this. Um, and the reason is... I can't really think any other way. Like some of the other guys will sketch stuff out and can just sort of work with more finished tile maps. But I tend to just, I can't think without a control pad in my hand. So I like to build things this way. Um, so how is this built? So this is just a collection of uh, tile map assets. So you can see this one is actually three separate ones. Um, and that's pretty, let's just open the thing over here. There we go. So this is, even though you notice down here, it's the cardboard editor, confusingly. Uh, I always find always find that a bit weird when I see it there. But um, this is pretty much what you get with Paper 2D. There's a few luxury things I'll cover later, but this is pretty much the stock thing. So you've got a set of test blocks. I got the guys to make me. Um, so the, we've got a ledge one, which has the metadata to allow you to grab hold of it. I'll talk about the metadata later, but I'm just letting you know that that is literally different. We've got ladders, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, we've got the different sort of slope angles that are permitted. And we've got the various drop-through surfaces, which um, if you saw before is, um, what game is it? I want to say Strider or something like that. Stuff where you can grab onto them, sort of drop between different layers, uh, you know, pass through them in a particular manner. And in terms of like functional design, those are all the things you can do, right? So that's all I need to know about. And uh, for those of you that have never used this thing before, I mean, literally, you can just do a little select like this, bring it over here, and slam them in, right? And um, this is actually a different map I've got open, so I will try and open it here. Uh, let's see, is it this one? Yes. Right, so there you go. So you see instantly these appear. Um, and I'm going to play with fire here and have a look see if it will just run so it's completely unlit at this stage because i don't really care about lighting i'll be honest uh, a bunch of debug free i don't care about that either but there you go it just works um so this is really quick so i could test this and i could you know i could go okay right i'm trying to get some jumps that are just right we actually have the metrics for these sorted but let's pretend i was experimenting with jump distance and things like that so i would do that and then i can just hop back into this uh when i'm not showing this off on a live stream i'm working on multiple screens so there wouldn't be quite such as a laser sort of popping open and closed so then i could put in a few more of these uh admittedly i've forgotten because it's been a while but we can actually use these gaps now we know how long our jumps are but let's pretend i didn't so i'll be like okay that looks cool put that in there hit play again f2 to disable the lighting and yeah i can do that so then i'd be like oh okay actually you know i don't want it that shorter uh come on come on game you got this there we go um, so there's an eraser as well, um, and I believe one of the improvements we made is that you can resize the eraser like this in the same way as the other thing. 
so don't quote me on paper 2d's one being quite the same it might be it might not um but we can just erase them simple as that right um so i think for our simple our simple levels that's pretty much it um so i mentioned the metadata as well which is something to talk about um now if we have let's just uh just get rid of this guy because he'll interrupt things now i will freely admit i'm running a kind of oh we did do that oh yeah uh aiden is telling me in the chat we did do that erase the resizing is one of our improvements i thought it was but it's been so long so yes in paper 2d i believe you get one size and that's it um but on that note we're hoping to roll all that stuff back into the main engine uh, at some point in the near future so where was i Yes, so I'm running over a slightly uh, unusual build, so hopefully the player controller is in a reasonable state, because I'll just show you something quickly. Uh, so if we go to this ledge, right, okay. So what is it that actually is different about that tile that allows me to do that? Um, that's a fairly simple thing to show, so if I bring up the other screen, and we've got this giant thing with all the tile sets in, so if we just uh, select, I don't know, anything in here. I'm careful with this file because it's a bit chunky, so it might crash. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So we can add our own um, user data to it here, which we've got for that single tile. So that's stone solid. And that's hooked up to a, uh, a metadata table. And if I hop over to this, this is basically how things work for our game. Um, so interestingly this is funny because i deliberately kind of look try not to look too closely so this is fresh to me i don't think we actually use this sound thing uh it certainly looks like we don't um although on reflection that might be literal audio or something don't know but that's not the important one the important ones are more um the ledge here so this obviously is ledge and ledge type which is fairly self-explanatory i think we have the uh the sort of tuck underneath and the hang on top um and i'm just checking if there's anything else here that's particularly exciting um while we're not talking about it today um you'll see the the noise rings that come out of the player and will come out of other objects uh they're actually all hooked up to the loudness value that's being sent from our sound event um which i forget what it's called but it's, an, <laughs> it's a sound event uh, which generates this radius that's actually using this lookup table here we've got a footstep component that looks for that so that's where we're getting the information from those uh from the tiles and for basic setups like this uh for me messing around and stuff that's really it um so there's a couple of other things that apply to the other ones uh the sort of other style of doing things when we're coming at it from a different angle so if i hop over now to our demo is a good example of the other way of doing things all right so as you can see this looks quite different um now one of the main things that's different here obviously is that it's actually lit and i will go into the lighting shortly but what i want to explain as well is that while some of this um uh was done i'm trying to think i feel like some bits of this were probably done for one of argument's sake uh, for argument's sake like sort of my way the sort of uh you know just very pure i just i can't think without sort of testing it and running out i don't tend to sketch things out so much but i tend to be sort of higher level mechanically metrically driven not um not what you you need that for some stuff but when you end up with situations like this when you're trying to build a world you need to come at it the other way for example some of this stuff some of this architecture um you know it has to look a certain way you can't it's just not going to work so a lot of these places where the gameplay is um less important you know the visual cohesiveness is more important uh the artists are much more keen to start from a sort of position of what is this place what is this building what does it do and then we kind of work backwards towards what i want uh sometimes we have let me got a little thing to show there we go sometimes these guys will just do a little sketch like this um this is a good example actually of how things are different uh Obviously, I could totally make a sketch like this. I mean, my art skills are terrible, but I'm confident I could do some, <laughs> do some of this. But when it comes to things like this, like the little jumps and stuff like that, I personally just like to actually just build that until it feels a certain way because I can do it quite fast. But I admit the weakness is then you don't get the sort of broader sense of the architecture. Um, but because they're made from different tile sets, we can slot them together. So I think it's very telling that I don't remember which ones of these 
were done sort of, you know, the method where I started that way and we worked up or the way we started, let's work architecturally and work backwards. It doesn't matter. Um, so the other thing that's different about these is obviously there's a lot more detail. There's foreground and background detail. And if we open one of these maps, we'll see where that's coming from. So firstly, the obvious thing is it's actually um, using, you know, an array of different tile sets. Um, let's just give this a little bit more space. So you can see here, um, we've got all the different tiles. I mean, this is this is where the labor comes in. This is where often people are like, oh, you know, how does this game look so good? What do you do? You know, what's the trick? What's the secret? Um, there isn't one, is, is to be honest, a large part of it. The reality is that you got to be able to do this. And I say this as someone who cannot do this. You know, we've, put, we've you know, luckily we've got people in the team who can. Um, being able to do this is a skill. And, you know, this there's a lot of work building up all these different tile sets. The actual painting of them, you know, that's another matter. So keep that in mind that really all the, all the detail is coming from these. You know, it's having, the reality is you have great source assets and then we build upon it. So how are we building upon it? Uh, the main thing is that, as I said, there's a bunch of different layers. So if we just hop through them, most of them are quite straightforward, I believe. He says, famous last words. So the background layer uh, is the background. So eventually, um, I imagine this is probably going to be something that ends up in a different situation to be sort of parallax and stuff. But for now, it's literally the furthest back. Uh, I think this one might... There you go, just checking. So yeah, uh, there's a detailed back layer, which is... Again, fairly self-explanatory, just layering on some stuff on top just to, you know, <laughs> provide detail. Uh, there's another one, I'm just checking. Yeah, so if we zoom in a bit just for the sake of those on uh, video, so you can see it just adds a few little pieces on top of that, just a couple of layers. Um, again, they're kind of ready to be parallaxed, uh, but they're not yet. And then the aforementioned drop through layer, there's probably nothing. I know there is this, this here, so you could potentially drop through this thing here. I don't know how well that shows. Um, so that's on its own layer, obviously, because that's the sort of gameplay feature that it's nice to have isolated and um, probably doesn't hurt for sort of managing the code for it, though I believe it's purely more just, a, you know, it's for design purposes. Uh, foreground, <laughs> hopefully very ex uh, self-explanatory. When I am making the those um, white box ones, I'm just using foreground. I don't care about anything else. Climbable. Oh, there is some climbable on here. I was going to say there isn't. Uh, so climbable, interestingly, this is news to me. Oops. Climbable looks like... Not only is, I'll just zoom in so you can see. It has some of our little details there for little tiles. You can climb up on the edges of this. But I think... Oops, keep doing that. But I think also it has some sort of uh sort of our design language sort of climbable uh to, to tell you hey this is climbable so for example this uh green stuff here that's in that layer even though it doesn't um it doesn't do anything you know it, but it, it indicates to you some way you can do something and then finally there's the detail oh, that's an interesting one this is funny uh, we do have a lot of layers so detail back what is a detail back the artists are probably screaming at the screen right now i'm not sure what that one is um that one's much clearer so there's a detail front i think yeah, you can see there's some stuff there um just further like foreground detail uh <laughs> i think at one point we sort of referred to it as the super foreground uh this one presumably is sort of an in-betweener that we're not using on this particular set i've shown so yeah if i just flick for those you can see that that's you know this is how we're getting the sort of level of um the level of detail into into the scene you know compared to my white box thing so as I said, you know, most of the hard work is coming from these tile maps and then the layering of them like this, like this. Again, I can say this because I'm not the artist. Um, you know, this looks really good. Um, and for many games, arguably, this is probably nearly all they do. And that's not to take away from them because this is kind of more pure. It's, um, you know, a pure pixel thing. Um, the thing for us and why we ended up, you know, with Unreal and everything is obviously this the secret source for us is we take this and then there's lighting and particles and stuff like that so if we hop back over here and i just very sneakily open my notes no one noticed i opened my notes uh okay let's put that away yes so lighting lighting is doing a lot here and hopefully i should be able to demonstrate let's get rid of all this other junk uh 
Aiden is reminding me, climbable layer should be for ladders and columns, but art sometimes shove detail in there to get an extra layer. That makes sense. So, um, yeah, you know, this, they're sort of broad rules. I don't think much of it is absolutely mandatory. It's more for organization purposes. So if they just want a little bit more detail, there's a good enough place to stick it. Right. Okay. Where was I? So lighting. Yes. Um, so again, this is the thing that comes up very often is that people think there's some massive trick. Um, we very often ask, you know, like, are you using doing clever stuff with shadows? Do you have normal mapping? Um, you know, which of these ridiculously advanced Unreal lighting features are you using? Um, and the truth is we're not really using any of them. I mean, obviously the base Unreal lighting is fantastic, but I think people have this expectation we're using something really crazy and that's just not the case. So uh, the main thing is... I'm going to just try to turn them all off, which I think I can do. Let's have a look. Excuse me a minute. Does that work? Ah, yes, it probably helped if I was in lit. Me being a filthy designer and living obviously in my white box town a lot of the time, uh, I tend to just leave it unlit and just forget about it. So lighting, guys, it does things. So let's let's turn off the lights. Um, should be some other ones there and there. That gets most of them. Right. So we are using lighting, um, as in, you know, we're not just using what I showed you in the time I've had it there, which a lot of these games probably would use. So this is what it looks like when it's not lit. Uh, I'm going to have a little look, check there's nothing in here. So all that's really left now is some of our um, tutorial texts and yeah, ghosts and stuff like that. But you can see like all the background, all of the actual sort of elements that you'd expect to have some layer of, uh, some degree of lighting are just gone. So let's build it up so the main thing that does stuff is if you let me find it is it here yes and then there's another one Boop. Ooh, there's a lot in that one and presumably yes right okay sorry love to excuse me this is not my home so i want to try and separate them so yes we have this thing here which i'm sure you're familiar with i believe um when you actually make something in Unreal, doesn't it start with one of these? I could be wrong, but anyway, um, it's a pretty standard thing, the directional light uh, thing here with the light component. So this, if we have a look, um, can I turn off just the ambient or is it part of ambient? I forget there's so much in there, excuse me. Yes, yeah, so if I turn this guy off, you can see that that's doing the bulk of the work, right? That's a strong like directional light that's giving you sort of um, your fill, right? Um, Again, I'm sure I'm butchering, you know, like I'm not an artist, but I understand the principle of what these things are doing. But that's sort of doing a general fill. Uh, there we go. And then to get beyond that, we have all the stuff in this ambience layer. Um, and I believe there's also some gameplay ones. Let's check. Yes, there is. There's quite a lot of stuff in gameplay, so I won't flick between those too much. Checking. Okay. So outside of that, we have a bunch of other lights and these are pretty normal point lights. Nothing too fancy about them. Uh, again, this is the thing, there's no trick. They're pretty standard lights. What is good about them is that um, our artists know what they're doing, again, unlike me. So the way we're using them is maybe slightly different to sort of uh, Unreal Engine's kind of got to focus on, you know, high-end uh, realistic lighting so you've got a lot of stuff you know you can use uh, inverse square which we're not using because you have to have massive values like to get lights that seem correct for this kind of setting obviously this is not realistic um and also let me just check so i'm making sure i'm not missing any important points nope. okay um so yeah you know these are pretty normal um what we are doing that's a bit a bit fancy is well i say a bit fancy the effect is fancy but again the implementation is super simple right is you see you've got situations here where um we've got sort of reasonable strength lights that have got a bit of color to them i should better turn this off this might be too subtle for twitch but we shall see there's a button here effects world Boop. so that might be too subtle uh but if i flick that back and forth a few times you can see uh ah ed has shown up Currently, the perspective viewport will give results more accurate to final game render than front viewport. That's a very polite way of saying, please stop using front, you idiot. Okay, I was going to save that reveal for later, but that's fair. So, um, yes, I apologize. 
the front view here doesn't give as accurate results to what's actually in the game. Um, so where was I? Yes, right. So some of these lights here you'll see are quite subtle. I'll just flick that again because now things are a bit different. Hopefully more noticeable. But what we're doing here is, I say we, uh, what the artist is doing here is, is sort of faking that kind of radiosity and bounce lighting you'd get, you know, almost for free in a proper 3D simulation. Um, so you'll notice there's a lot of these around. See, that one's got that slight um, pink color to it and you've got some of that sort of nice and blue. Um, and individually, like, you know, oops, individually they don't make a huge difference, but cumulatively you see there's a lot of them and they make a big difference. Um, and that's something that adds, that's kind of how things work with this, right? It's lots of little things that come together to actually uh, make it look good. There's no one single trick. Uh, and you see with these, obviously that's got some particles and stuff, but the light is normal light. Um, and another little thing to note as well is, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have a uh, full parallax yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's coming, but it's one of those things where it's always hard to prioritize it at this point in the game because it's not like an unknown thing. Like we don't, you know, we don't know if it, we're aware of what it's going to do for us. We know exactly how it's going to look, almost exactly how it will look. Um, it doesn't, you know, like, I don't know, for example, some of the world building we're doing or some of the abilities and unlocks and stealth options of things. We don't know how they'll work. We don't know how they'll influence the level design. With this stuff, we're pretty sure. So it always, you know, it's coming, but it's not coming yet. Uh, but anyway, so until we get proper parallax or any parallax rather, we can also do things where we've got these separate layers here where they're set up, ready to go. Um, and for now, we can just stick the lights actually in there so we get the effect we want. Um, later on, obviously, when this isn't the case and those layers are moving we'll probably have to do something a bit more fancy uh, to get the lights to go with them not sure what um but we will find a way um okay actually i come through this fairly quickly so that's that's good uh what else yes there is the 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 color grading through the light volume so that's another thing that we get asked about again it's something where they're relatively subtle but between that and the sort of fake bounce lighting and things like that. Um, it's starting to build on top of what people expect from these kind of games, I think. So I'm not going to try to get into too much detail for this, because to be honest, I think this is a topic on its own. And it's a topic for someone far more, uh, <laughs> far more artistically minded to handle. But the general gist is um, we have different lookup tables for different things. So hopefully, can I just check they do work here? Right. Okay, so you can see the global one set here is this cold dawn, which hopefully looks cold, like particularly if you saw these big uh, wide areas, you can see that. And if I actually drop into this one, do it again, so you can see that's quite different. Uh, so let's have a look. Can I select this? Should be able to select it. So there you go. This is a uh, warm sewer. Makes sense. Doesn't sound pleasant, but looks pleasant. And this one is different as well. So we've got a couple of those and you can see they're sort of big 3D volumes like the other stuff. Um, so that's what really takes you from something like, excuse me. That's what really takes you from something like this, right? Which already, again, I'm not an artist, someone I'd say it, I think looks really nice. That's what takes you from this to, uh, you know, something, let's just hit the old G button. There we go. So it takes you from that to something like this um and looks like you know what i'm running up on time i'm apologies i've had to cut it a bit short today uh that's life for you oh look at that that's so pretty oh sorry distracted um there was one other thing i was going to show what was it not sure oh yes uh let me find one of these waterfalls because they're cool i noticed that they have some stuff going on with them um they're not lit as such but it's another example of sort of a compound of different things. So you see it's picking up a bit of a lighting and you've got some stuff in there. And again, uh, people ask like, oh my God, how are you doing this? Like, are you doing some really fancy stuff in 2D? Again, people are obsessed with normal maps. There's no normal maps. Um, again, I think we go into detail about it later. I mean, the actual sort of sprite effect is cool, but I found this quite uh, illuminating myself because I honestly hadn't looked at this before. Like, whoop, if you just bring this guy out here, so that you can see <gasps> behind the curtain, you can see how it all works. I love the way that these are like, um, what you call them? Oh, I've forgotten, but they look like something from Doom or something when you can rotate around them. Fun times. So anyway, um, hopefully, let's just get a nice view of the whole thing. Hopefully that kind of demystifies um, 
you know, hope that demystify some of the process we actually go through here. Um, everyone thinks there's loads of tricks. There really aren't any tricks. We're not using any shadows. We're not using any normal maps. Uh, we're not using the sort of fancy realistic lighting. All that stuff, you know, is not what we're actually doing. Um, what we are doing, sadly, uh, well, sadly, if you're looking for a quick fix, is it's a lot of hard work, a lot of meticulous work. Um, I hope you can see like that sort of thing of faking the radiosity. That's just going to take time and thought, but each particular bit isn't difficult. So I think the general takeaway, I hope, is that you can see that this is approachable, but, you know, you don't get results overnight. Uh, I hope that was a good overview, and uh, hopefully you've got questions for me, so please fire them over uh, through our various social media means. And I will be back later this week. What day is it today? It is Tuesday. I'll be back on Thursday uh, with a sort of general weekly catch-up. Thank you for stopping by, guys. See you later.